Me the formula, I execute the formula. No, you have to be thinking ahead, all right? So here we go, integration by parts. Can I use u dv? No, because I'm already, that's, u is already my variable over there. So I can use dv, that's fine, but I can't use u. I have to use some other letter, so I'm gonna use w. So now your whole ultraviolet minus voodoo little cute saying goes out the window. You need to know the formula more for like what happens as opposed to little cute little sayings. So what, I'm at, what am I gonna choose for my W? U. And then my DV will be E to the U DU. What's the derivative of W? What's DW? One DU. What's the antiderivative of e to the u? e to the u. Voodoo. Voodoo. It's not, it's not voodoo anymore, right? Who cares? It's this times this. That's the new integral. See, that's why I like working with a table, because I'm thinking about what my answer is going to be. It's going to be these two multiplied minus the integral of those two, right? These two multiplied minus the integral of those two. Let's write it down. We have that 2 right there, right? That 2. That 2 is going to have to have an impact on everything we say that this is, right? So if this becomes the, the integration by parts formula, that 2 is going to have to distribute. So I'm going to have to have a, a bracket or something here. And now you ready? These two multiplied? e to the u? Sorry, u e to the u minus a little bit of a space there, integral, these two multiply. Do I have any constants to pull out? No, right? I mean, you can pull a one out, but no constants, right? So it's just e to the u du. Is that new integral make you happy? That new integral should make you happy, right? The antiderivative e to the u is itself. So maybe two more steps, two bracket, u e to the u minus e to the u plus c, right? I'm going to have to have a plus c at some point. Go ahead and throw it out there right way up the back side. See, I actually did the antiderivative now, didn't I? To get from here to here. And distribute the 2, right? Distribute the 2. Um, yeah, I'll do it right here. Distribute the 2. If I distribute the 2, I get... 2u e to the u minus 2e to the u plus c. Do I box that? Is that my final answer? No, because my original integral was in terms of x, right? So I need to get back to x. What's the relationship between u and x? u is the root of x. So now I just replace all my u's with root x, and that should be the answer. 2 root x e to the root x minus 2e to the root x plus a constant. Yes, you could have just replaced these with root x's and that's fine. You don't need to distribute the two. You could also, there's another thing you could do here if you really wanted to, like if you liked it in more of a factored form, you could pull a two back out of these you can see that they both have an e to the root x, and then you'd have root x minus 1 here, plus c. That's the same thing, right? These both have 2 e to the root x, 2 e to the root x. Just pull it out, and that leaves you with the root x here, and then a 1 here, and then plus c. That, that would be acceptable as well. Okay, so what's the moral of the, okay, what's the moral of the story of the previous problem to this one? Sometimes you do it and then you wind up seeing the original integral on the other side and then you add it to both sides and it works. The moral of the story here is that sometimes, what? You got to be creative, yeah. Sometimes what you don't think is going to work actually does work and the only way you know it is to actually try it, All right? How does this make y'all feel? Sad. Sad? Anxious? I hope that you look at it, you know, I know it's intimidating first time you're ever doing this stuff, but I hope that, I hope that you have that mindset where you're like, 
this is a challenge, right? This is, this is a challenge for you. It's not, um, you know, you're either one of those people who, who like, like this type of thing or you, you just hate this type of thing. Hopefully you like it because um, that's, I think, what we're trying to develop in a class like this is that mentality of like, you can't focus on anything else because you need to figure this problem out. You know, like you're sitting there with your family and friends, but you're still thinking about this integral you can't figure out right? That's the type of persistence you need for it, right? Creativity, right? Critical thinking is what this is all about. Critical thinking. All I'm trying to do up here is show you enough examples to give you some sort of feel for the type of thinking you have to do, right? All right, let's do another one. Okay, I handed you a sheet, right? So I took this sheet today, I opened up in my office, I've got this bookshelf full of all sorts of books and I have probably 10 calculus books in there. And I just grabbed one, flipped to integration by parts and took a picture of the homework set. So I haven't done any of these. So pick one. And don't be like, let's do number 40. Like, let's, let's you know, let's work our way through this a little bit. So I'm letting you choose. So Anyone want to volunteer which one they want to see done? The, the fact that they're circled, I don't know. I, I didn't circle those. The book already was written in. I was going to say seven. Seven? All right, let's do seven. Natural log x over x squared. Like I said, I haven't done these. I'm pretty confident I'm not going to get stuck on any of these, but you know, I am human. But I already see how to do this one, so I'm not, I'm not worried about this one. Take your time. You know it's integration by parts. How do you know that? Because I'm telling you this is integration by parts, right? Okay. Integration by parts, you need, that means you need to pick something to be your U and something to be your, your DV, right? LN would be the U. You want LN to be the U? Okay, careful, careful. This is a, oh man, this is a big mistake students make. This is what students will do. What's wrong with that? Yeah, that's not what you have. You don't have X squared. You have 1 over X squared. Right? That's not right. Yes, the natural log, you can let that be your u, but really this integral looks like this. Right? That's really what it is. So if you're going to let your dv be the other piece, it's got to be 1 over x squared. You don't, you don't know how many times I see that mistake. So I'm trying to emphasize it here. All right, I'm okay with this choice. Can we think a little bit about it before we do it, if this is gonna work? What's this piece down here gonna be? One over, one over x, right? And then I'm gonna have to multiply that times this. The antiderivative of this, can you get that? Yes, because this is, x, this is really x to the negative two, isn't it? And to, you could use the power rule to do that, right? So when you integrate this, you're gonna have some power of x up here and down here, you're going to have 1 over x, and those should marry together pretty nicely somehow. I don't know yet, but they should be something I can work with. Understand? So du is 1 over x dx, and then v is, okay, let's just do this real quick on scratch work. I'm trying to find the antiderivative 1 over x squared dx. That's the same as the antiderivative of x to the negative 2, which is what we started when we first started talking about antiderivatives. This was like one of the first most basic ones, right? You have x to a power, so we do 1 over that power plus 1, u to that power plus 1, right? That's, so this would be negative u to the negative 1, right? That's the antiderivative. Why did I put u? I'm not sure why I put a U, sorry about that. I'm not sure why I put a U there, sorry, that's X. My mistake. Do y'all agree with that? Okay, so this becomes, and what is that really? What is that? Negative, Negative one over X, X, right?
Any questions? From here to here, right? And now I'm thinking about voodoo, right? I'm thinking about voodoo and I like it, right? Because what's, one, what's negative one over x times one over x? Negative one over x squared. And wait, didn't we just do one over x squared, right? So we already know how to do that integral. So this is gonna, this is gonna be nice. Okay, here we go. Equals, here's our answer. Ultraviolet, these two multiplied. I'll write it like this. Ultraviolet minus a space integral voodoo. Voodoo, voodoo. These two together, right? That and that multiplied. What do you say I pull that negative out? Is that okay with you? Take that negative right there, and let's just go ahead and pull it out of the integral, which is going to change this to a plus. Right? And that's because, that's because of this piece. And then in here, I have 1 over x squared dx. And since we just did that integral, I already know what that answer is, right? It's negative 1 over x. So this is negative 1 over x natural log x plus, right? But wait a minute, that's going to be minus? So it'll be minus 1 over x plus c. All of that, right, is just that, which is that, which is negative 1 over x, right? Which is this. Questions? We haven't done this in a while. We haven't checked our answer in a while, have we? It's been a while? Do you mind if I check that one? No? Yeah? I'm going to take derivative of that real quick. And so when I take derivative of this, I have product rule right there. Right? That's what I have. OK. I'm going to have to take derivative of this, right? And just as a reminder, that's really negative x to the negative 1. So if I take derivative of that, I get negative 1 comes out, hits that, becomes positive 1, x to the negative 2, which is really 1 over x squared. So just as a little side note. The derivative of that is just 1 over x squared. Here we go, product rule. Derivative of that is 1 over x squared times natural log x. OK, plus, now the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x, times the, the first one, negative 1 over x squared. And then minus the derivative of, what's the derivative of this? Of the whole, of the, including the minus. Because I included the minus here, didn't I? Oh, wait, hold on, 1 over x. I already was scoring it in my head, sorry. That's this, that's uh, derivative of natural log, and then times that piece. And then derivative of that, we just said, would be plus 1 over x squared. Y'all see what happens? This together is what? Negative 1 over x squared plus 1 over x squared. Those two cancel, and you're left with this, which was the original integral. That was the integrand of the original integral. So it works. All right. All right, let's pick another one. How are we doing on time? We're only halfway through class. Only. 12? OK, let's look at 12. Drum roll. OK. Good one. Good one. I see it, but that doesn't help you, does it? So um, why don't you take a few minutes, OK? Let's see if you can do it. Let's see if you can at least get down the right path. Let's say five minutes. I'm not saying finish it in five minutes. I'm just saying let's see how far you can get with it in five minutes.